Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Kellen here from Star Your Systems, and welcome to another MXGP2, the, uh, the official motocross video game career mode. Already flubbing words, and I'm, what, 10 words in? And uh, we are on part 18, which means there are six races left to go. We're still riding sort of privateer Honda status. We're trying to catch a Roman Fevre in the points, if you remember correctly from the last time. Uh, I believe I won both GPs that I raced in the last one. So we're going into Lock It now, which as I said, six rounds to go. And this track I am pretty bad at. At least I have been bad at it before. No idea how I'm going to do on a 450 on it because I actually, I don't think I've raced it on a 450 before. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is where I wrapped up the MX2 title last time. Obviously not going to do that today, uh, being as I'm actually behind in the points and there's still a lot of rounds to go. But we'll just figure it out, all right? I'm going to be a little bit rusty too, I assume, because I haven't played this game in a little bit. Oh, shifted up, and yeah, already fucked it. All right, let's see how we go. Setup is still pretty fire. I'm going to use some outsides to my advantage and go right off the track. So, immediately, this is already going to be a disaster. It's going to be crucial because I'm going to need to beat Fevra. To make this championship a possibility, but I'm not going to beat him with uh, silly little maneuvers like that off the start. So I'm already pretty much dead last, and I got to try to weave my way through the field. And the best thing I've found to do in a situation like this is try to avoid, like, even getting close to people, take complete alternate lines, try to do my best to basically, like, weave around people, if you will. Because the collisions are a little funky in this game, also on the back of Butron. See, like that was a good line right there. Gained a couple spots. I really like using these like outside lines to my advantage, but now it puts me in a tough spot because I'm on the inside here. Oh, a little kick. Oh man! All right, so we're gonna try to weave our way through the field here. We got two motos of this, both of them three laps. In, in case you are new to the series. Um, and the reason that I wanted to kind of end 2016 on this series was that uh, our first look in the career mode video in this series was actually our most successful video of 2016, believe it or not. And so I wanted to uh, kind of salute to that a little bit by getting closer and closer to wrapping up the series that we started. It's going to be a 20-parter, as I mentioned in the last one, because... Uh, well, there's going to be four GPs to go after this one, and I do two GPs of video. So, 20-parter. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the most successful one. It's got over 90,000 views, about 92,000 views, I think. And that's just this year. Our most successful video of all time was uh, online play sep uh, episode 17 called High Speeds and Good Times, where Jeremy and I played uh, the Mototech Husqvarna compound in MX Simulator. But... Uh, that video was released last year, like kind of late last year, but it still wasn't as popular or successful as the uh, first look career mode in this game was this year for us. So that's been our most successful video this year, and I figured I'd end it on a video that uh, kind of highlights that a little bit. And I'll also kind of talk about 2016 a little bit, which was a great year for us, um, growing wise. I hope to do, you know, a lot better coming soon, but uh, it's a start two years in kind of a, a reflect on where we are um, over 16,000 subscribers I definitely would have never dreamed in my wildest dreams that we'd be at that point two years into a YouTube channel and I'm gonna preface this right now by saying uh, you know starting off kind of by saying I use the words are and we a lot and people always like Kellen why do you, you talk in third person well for those of you that are like newer to the channel seeing as we have like a fairly big growth in the channel these last um i don't know eight or nine months or so uh i actually started this channel together with a, another friend of mine named jeremy who uh if you watch any of our old online play videos he's in all of them i think yeah he has not been he's not not been in an online play video yet and he used to do a lot of like other games career modes and stuff like that like project cars dirt rally a um, few other games, Madden, and so you do a lot of the stuff that basically you don't see anymore on the channel. 
and I've just been kind of doing my own thing this whole time. And Jeremy's been a little bit kind of MIA lately, and I keep, you know, saying, well, he's going to come back, he might come back, he, he, blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing. But we've sort of mutually agreed lately that, like, it's going to be sort of my deal to run for now, and when he comes back, he will. But we're also going to start having, like, guest contributors come in and do stuff on the channel here and there, so uh, it's not going to be just me and Jeremy anymore, and it's not going to be just me, even though Jeremy isn't, you know, really contributing. So just be on the lookout for that next year, just kind of giving you a sneak peek. But uh, as I said, together we have now over 16,000 subs, which is uh, huge. Over three and a half million views, I think, closing on four million unique views, and uh, almost over, I think, 550 videos created in that time span, which is a lot, but, um, you know, we were able to pull it off and do it with gusto, so I'm not complaining by having to do a lot of videos. And it's been super fun, super enjoyable, and I'm actually very, very excited for what's to come in uh, 2017, and you guys are going to see all that pretty much right out of the gate. I mean, I'm hoping day one, 2017, we have a video out but it, it's, it could be more likely that the second day we'll have a video out and then from then on it's like whammo, we're coming in hot, we're, we're bringing a lot of new content, we got a lot of new ideas. I don't know how I just rode out of that, but holy crap, I'm gonna try to jump, oh come on, don't do that to me. It's gonna try to jump over those guys. So, I really ended up winning, but I think I beat Fevra, so that's gonna be good. Anyway, 2017 is gonna be great. 2016 though, just to kind of reiterate, was a huge year for us, like a big turning point, I think, it, it kind of gave us a mindset as to where we're going in the future. And I did beat Fever by five spots, actually, so I was big in the championship. Moving on to race two, though. We're actually going to fall, like, I think, like, 100, maybe 200 subs short of doing 10,000 subs in a year. We did about 6,600 our first year, and we're at 16,300-something right now as I'm making this video. This will come out the day before New Year's Eve. And I just don't think we'll quite get to that mark. But, I mean, just to even come that close to gaining 10,000 subs in a year is, like, pretty freaking cool to me, at least. I mean, I, I never would have expected to have such massive growth and to be kind of getting to where we are, to be honest. So, I'm super pumped for it. And I, I just, I don't know what else to say except, like, thank you to all of you guys that watch our videos. Because, I mean, you make it so that we can do this and and keep doing it and uh you know it's not like we break the bank with how much money we make on youtube or anything like that but jeremy and i both agreed when we started it's going to be kind of like a hobby thing and, and we both have you know jobs that we take care of with our own personal life so it's not like we rely solely on this or have ever really solely relied on this but um it's nice to be able to do this for fun and, and have a core group of people and and now we're getting to the point where it's it's kind of a big deal like i'm not saying that we're a big deal at all in fact in, ter in terms of like youtube popularity we're not even close like we're not way up there with the the real huge creators in this and we're not verified yet or anything like that i hope to be at some point but we're not there and but it, to the point of that, I mean, the core people that we have that subscribe to this channel, the 16,000 whatever of you, are just, like, awesome. Like, I, they're a great group of fans and, and people to converse with, and, and the questions that you guys always ask us on the channel are, are very well thought out and nice, and um, at no point do I ever feel, like, annoyed or, like, you guys are hating on me or anything like that. And when there are haters, like I said, I've said it in plenty of videos before, like, I... I literally just look at it and I kind of laugh because I'm just like, well, you, you're hating on the video, but you're watching the video too. And there seems to be a, a good consensus of other people that enjoy the videos too. So, you know, hate away, but I'm not really going to take it as of negative. It's just like, cool, we're doing something right because we got haters. Um, and that's just the way it works. But like I said, just the, the core group of you guys that watch our videos are just awesome people to... Um, respond to and chat with and always super nice conversations that I have with people that say oh man I've been watching you since you know this that or the other thing and it, that like that's so cool to me and that's so cool to us I'm sure Jeremy feels the same way when he gets people that says that kind of things to him you know so I guess this video is more or less me just saying like two years in thanks like you guys are making this way way enjoyable great experience for us and we hope to 
just con continue to provide like awesome content for you guys in the future that you you enjoy and you um you come back regularly and watch and you tell your friends about and all that stuff but mainly you know you you personally enjoy what we do and that's that's what's important to us so yeah to your retrospect thanks a lot because it's just it's awesome but enough about me blowing you guys it's time for me to uh go ahead and go try to win this championship i i would say and uh i mean 18 episodes into this now i i don't know if my opinion really has changed about this game i still feel like there's some things wrong with it but the the thing that i love about it and the thing that i've always said about like mx versus atv supercross encore 2 is there's a game for us to play like even if it's not perfect even if you think like encore is garbage or anything like that or even to the people out there that think sim is garbage because it's hard to play at least it's something i mean we the more you know creators and people that that have eyes on this like the more it, you know in, in some ways the videos that i do on youtube i feel like kind of help with this but in in some ways the more kids that we have growing up playing motocross video games the more of them will want to ride a dirt bike and get their families into it and and, and also well we'll get into the professional racing scene of it and everything like that because i'm sure like a lot of us we all want motocross to be like a huge globally recognized sport and it is globally recognized for sure but it's not like you know soccer is for the the globe and it's not like american football is for the USA or Major League Baseball or anything like that and it probably never will be because not no motorsport is that big except F1 and that's only big because it's a global sport for sure like NASCAR is mediocrely global but not big time and then there's like world endurance and all that stuff like that but you know F1 has just always been kind of the staple and so it's the biggest motorsport in the world but even that kind of pales in comparison to the popularity that some other sports have particularly soccer soccer is the dominating force of the world but you know in america at least up until recently uh you know american football has just been like huge and i don't see supercross and motocross ever really getting to that point but i think if you get a base of people that play you know like you have kids growing up playing these video games getting excited about it and then you know getting their their first dirt bike going riding learning about the sport getting more involved and then that's those dads that grew up racing getting their kids excited about it and like continuing the generation on which is kind of my point with all that so fevra i gained nine points on him and moved to within three points of the championship lead by winning the gp of locket and I probably only won that run because I got a whole shot in the second moto. But I failed the team objective as per usual. Hopefully that doesn't bite me in the butt. We're going to move on to the next race right quick though. Lommel. And I'm going to continue off my thoughts about motocross. But anyway, like, if you're going to grow a sport, you got to start, I think, with the younger audience that will grow into enjoying it. And that's why, you know, like Madden has been huge in part of what has grown the millennial interest in football like nfl is is totally something that kids these days and teens and young adults and stuff love and i think part of it has to do with the fact that madden was such a popular series i think it's part of the reason why you're going to see nba basketball become kind of a, a a leader in in u.s sports before you know it and it, it, it really already is but i mean like it's going to be a big deal because 2k nba 2k is like everybody's jam like it's the bee's knees for sports people to play these days because it's a good engine and it's they've got great career mode stuff like that and everybody's like oh 1v1 me on 2k bro you won't so it's kind of like everybody was saying oh 1v1 me on cod you won't you know um but like i said you know video games i think are always going to be a part of my life and i grew up playing them and it, it, it's honestly in my opinion what got me even more and more interested in moto like my dad raced so i grew up racing and riding and stuff like that for sure and i would watch all the old school you know moto vhs's terra firma steel roots the bar to bar series etc and those would get me excited about it too but then when you actually got to hold a controller and feel like oh you know i'm i'm sitting on a couch right now but i'm actually controlling a dirt bike like that's pretty that's pretty neat like that's that's fun and interesting for someone that's interested in moto like me and, and like you guys probably are so i guess my my 
saying in all that is like you know it is the experience really something that gets people interested in my opinion yes it is in your opinion maybe it's not maybe it's like it you know video games are kind of like what kills it a little bit because it draws people away from actually going out and riding a dirt bike and buying a motorcycle and getting you know kind of into the industry more because they're too busy sitting on their couch and playing but for someone like me and for a lot of people in sim and a lot of people that just game in general you know we're, we're all moto people like i have a dirt bike i race i ride on the weekends when i get the chance to it's just that during the week when we have our office jobs and we have other things that we got to do and tracks are closed usually anyway um it's fun to be able to pick up a controller and you know pilot a virtual dirt bike it's always what i've enjoyed about motocross video games and why i have pretty much an entire youtube channel dedicated to it although that's not what our youtube channel is supposed to be about we have all motorsports games but we do primarily moto for sure i know that so that's my thoughts on it all i guess you know um so i guess i'm gonna wrap up kind of this the whole discussion in this last video of the year by talking about um how my year went and i'm gonna ask you guys too in the comment section below because i love when you guys get involved in it and kind of give us your whole synopsis of, of life and stuff like that you know, what did you like about your 2016? And what are you maybe looking forward to about 2017? You know, what kind of resolutions do you have? Um, what kind of things didn't happen in 2016 that you think might happen in 2017? For me, for example, it was a very big year for me. I graduated with a uh, bachelor's in arts in uh, communication studies from the University of San Diego. So graduated college and moved on with my life from school. So no longer in school, it's kind of interesting and weird to be that way but it is and then uh, in the summer after I graduated I proposed to my girlfriend of seven years who is now my fiance and you guys have seen her in some of our videos before her name is Hannah she's uh, awesome she's gonna be a part of my life and I'm super excited for that and before our summer was even over we uh, buckled everything down packed up in my truck and for 25 days hit the road and traveled to 33 different states and the uh, Washington DC and uh, just drove I think we went like 8,500 miles almost 9,000 miles we went to several different places we'd never been to before experienced a lot of different things and uh, we came back from the experience not hating each other which I think is a good sign for our possible future marriage you know so I'm excited for that. We got our wedding venue booked. Um, and like I said, it was a good year for our YouTube channel, so I was super excited about that. And just in general, I feel like life for me was pretty good in 2016. There are some things that weren't great, but you know, you live and you learn. And uh, sometimes life isn't always fair, I guess. But I think in general, my 2016 was very good. And I'm looking forward to 2017 for sure. I mean, there's... A lot of things to be excited about for me going into 2017 what with this YouTube channel still growing and with my uh, personal life maybe going through some some changes and things but I think it's gonna be good changes and um, yeah like I said I just want to hear what you guys have to say you know how was your 2016 what what did you do what was exciting this, this year that that uh, sparked some interest more interesting things going on in your life um, doesn't have to be even close to the things I did um, I would assume our viewership and age of viewership that people watch our videos probably aren't in the same area as me as they're about to get married or maybe they're about to graduate college but I know some of you out there might be um, depending on our audience but uh, maybe you graduated high school in 2016 maybe you moved up to uh, into high school in 2016 uh, maybe you you know won some of your local races if you race motocross or whatever like just i love to hear what you guys have to say and there is a comment section below this video for your comments and concerns to be heard to the world all right one race in the books at lamo dominated fevra and picked up three points so we are now actually tied for the world championship lead so if i can beat him in this next race i'll go into the last two videos with the championship lead and it's going to be a teeter-tottering effect so, so very interesting. I honestly, like, I really can't believe that it's already the new year. Like, you know, tomorrow is going to be New Year's Eve when, in, in correlation to when this video comes out, I mean. And that, to me, is like, 
that's crazy. Time has gone by so freaking fast. Whoa, that's an interesting restart. Then let me go all the way around the outside. But seriously, from like the time I graduated college this year, which was in May, so it was like eight months ago, seven months ago, until today, and even still going on, I feel like time is just like zipping by. Like, I don't even feel like it's been more than three months maybe since I graduated, but it's been at least seven, you know? I get that's mind boggling to me how fast time is just scooting by. And so many things in my life and all that business too have changed since then too, which is crazy, but it just doesn't feel like it's happened that fast or, or happened that slow, I guess. I feel like it's all been a lot faster. Like our road trip took up a month basically and getting engaged and all that business was, was a, you know, a long time ago now too, but I just don't, like I vividly remember standing in line to graduate this year and everything about that day and stuff like that. And it does not feel seven months ago at all, like not even close. I feel like people say that all the time though. They're always like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how fast this year went by. Like, can you believe it's already this year? And then everybody for four months forgets to write 2017 when they're writing the date and all that business like that which I did for ever, oh my gosh, I was the worst ever when I was in school of always writing, I'd know what day it was because I had a calendar and all that business, you know, it'd be whatever, January 16th or something, I'm writing the date for a paper I need to turn in or something like that. But then of course I put 2016, not 2017. And I'd be like, idiot, or you know, not, because it, it's that's old, but it, you know, I put oh, it, it goes from 2012 to 2013, and I'd still put 2012, and I do that for like months. Like I couldn't train my brain to think about the fact that oh yeah, another year has passed, so we got to put a different date down. I don't know how I got so bad at it or why or anything like that, but I was certainly not good at remembering that it was a new year and it was time to change it. I guess it's just because. In, in some aspects, you write the dates so much in school that it almost becomes like muscle memory to just like whatever date you're writing, you just put 2012 at the end of it, you know, because that's the year you're in and you write it like a thousand times at least, I'm sure, during the school year. And then I just never learned or thought about changing it, you know, I don't know. There's probably some sort of scientific explanation of why your brain just forgets all the time even though you you have to keep writing 2017 at the beginning of the year and all that stuff like that when the year changes it, it, you still just like automatically go to writing the year it was before because you're so used to writing it i assume i'm literally blabbering on about nothing right now like what even is this conversation i'm talking about not remembering to write down what day it is after the new year like what even is that Instead, I'm ripping through the field in an MXGP race in the deep sands of Lommel in Belgium. We're up. I'm gonna try to catch everybody though, because I have to beat Fever to take over the championship lead. We're tied. So, gotta get around Noggle, Dassault, and then race leader of Rome Fever. So, this game. For those of you that just like maybe live under a rock or anything, is actually based off of the 2015 MXGP World Championship and not the 2016 version. And uh, in 2015, Roman Fevre was the world champion. And uh, Tim Geyser, who is the 2016 MXGP World Champion, is actually still in the MX2 class in this game, in which he won the MX2 World Championship last year, 2015. So, um, kind of interesting. I'm sure that they'll come out with an MXGP3 or something soon. I always see Milestone posting a bunch of new photos on their Instagram pages and Facebook and stuff like that about the new game. Or not the, about the new game, but about things they're doing. They're usually pretty discreet about the new game. Like, it's only... It's, I think when MXGP2 was about to come out, it was only like maybe a month before the game was set to be released that they started like dumping screenshots and videos of the gameplay and stuff onto us. And I don't know why that is, I, I, I guess it's because they do it year to year, so they kind of let MXGP2 take its course and post screenshots and videos and stuff of that for as much as time as they can get out of it basically, and then when it's time to start talking about the new game, when everybody's kind of over the old game and all that business, then they're like, oh yeah, we have this game coming out, and you should play it. I guess, I don't know, could be like that. I feel like that's how it probably works with like, the Maddens and the MLB, the shows and the 2Ks and all that business too, because they come out with a new game every year. 
Whereas most motocross video games, it's not the case. Like, well, let me think, Untamed was 07, Reflex was 09, Alive was 2011. So yeah, like every two years, I guess. Anywho, I'm gonna wrap up this video because I'm about to finish this race and take over the championship lead in doing so. But I hope you guys had a great year of watching our content. And I definitely hope you guys enjoyed this video. And please subscribe if you enjoyed it because we're just gonna have a lot more content coming soon. And uh, I'm excited for it. I hope you're excited for it. Happy 2017, ladies and gentlefish. And we'll see you guys next year.